So whenever you are thinking about um, learning a new skill or taking on the project or um, thinking about how deep you're going to the problem, always think back, going back to um, the initial goal of your project. And if you're not clear, always talk to your manager to get clarity because things uh, change um, very fast. Sometimes what you're, the problem you're trying to solve maybe later on is not become very good anymore. Uh, it's not be gonna become very important anymore. So uh, the fourth one, I'm going to talk a few points about the difference between school and uh, workplace. So in school, when we have a project or even when you're doing a, a boot camp, they already prepare the data source for you and it's, it's validated. Well, if they really want to test you, sometimes they might um, intentionally put some missing data, but it, it's still pretty easy to uh, figure out. But in the industry, especially uh, if you're in a large, if you're in a company where the data science is supporting a different type area of business, the data is all over the place. Um, and then if you think about, say, you need data from the sales department or from the operation department, sometimes they don't even have the same index for you to join the data together. And uh, a lot of times you have to, you need to be the person. Usually they don't really have, a, a, you don't always, I would say you, you don't always have a project manager or program manager to help you with those things. So you are the program manager to manage uh, working with different teams to collect the data uh, and then also check data quality. Um, so it's very common that you might spend 50% of your time just to build pipelines and getting data. And why I say data quality is very important because um, there are so many unexpected events when other teams collect the data and what does those data mean? In the beginning, um, when you just started your career, you might find those job, those process very tedious, but the model is only gonna get as good as your data is. So if your data is uh, crappy, you're not gonna have a good model. And once you have collected all the data and the quality is good, it's actually very easy for you to find a tool and solve the problem. Um, so this is very different from the uh, from in school. And if you don't have this expectation, you might feel um, frustrated or confused. Uh, and also, like I said, you might have uh, dependencies on other teams, right? Um, someone, okay, I'm gonna answer a question here. Sometimes you lose respect from the team when they see you asking or looking for answers. Uh, I, I don't know the context of this. I, I think this is the previous point I mentioned you need to ask for help when you, when you need help. Um, I don't think this is the case. I think it, if you think about this, right? You have a problem, but you don't ask for help and you delay the project or didn't deliver high quality products. Um, but versus you ask for help, you look stupid, but somehow um, because you asked for help early in the project, you still are, you are still able to deliver the product in the end. So I, I don't think you look stupid. I read, nobody is, uh, is perfect. And if your team make you feel stupid, then um, if this is something common, then you need to consider whether this team culture is good because a good leader is supposed to make you feel safe when you have concerns or want to ask a question. Of course, you need to ask a question after you do some type of research or you have a few proposals, how do you solve and ask your team to help you uh, give you some suggestions. Not, never ask a question without doing any research, but uh, you don't need to be afraid of losing um, respect from other people if they ask a question. Um, so that, that's a good question. Um, uh, I, I think this is an important one to address, so that's why I stopped the presentation to do this, but the majority questions, I'll answer them later. Um, yeah, in, in short, is don't be afraid to look stupid in the beginning, um, otherwise you look stupid in the end, right? So the next one, uh, 
did I, uh, I was talking about the second part. So I talk about dependencies on other team. Um, sometimes your managers, uh, it's, it's again, it's different from in school. Your professor has the absolute authority. Your, your professor is not going to have, help you solve the problem. But if you work in a company, your manager doesn't, it isn't just the person who assign a task for you. Your manager is there to provide you resources for you. So um, of course you need to respect your manager, but there are some cases you also need to manage your manager. Uh, what do you mean by manage your manager? I'll give you an example. If you need, say, data from the um, engineering team, but they never collect the data for you because engineering team, they have their own priorities. They don't want to just collect the data for you. And uh, the, engineer, the engineers listen to their manager. So here you, can, you need to uh, talk to your manager to see, I need to have this data um, but it's not their priority. Can you help me to talk to their manager and prioritize this if this is something really important for me, right? And then your manager talking to their manager is very easy to help the engineers prioritize their task. So um, collecting data, doing those things, you, are, you, are, you work with a, a, a program manager uh, on your own sometimes, but don't forget to leverage the resource from your manager um, whenever you, you, you can't, you feel like you're not supported enough. It's not because, um, you know, other people don't want to listen to you, you're, you're not important or anything. You don't need to feel frustrated. Just those things are sometimes outside our scope. Whenever you feel like you already tried to communicate with them, they don't listen to you, ask your manager to help and your manager will be very happy to help. And then your manager will also appreciate you ask them to help them because that, that is their job. And the next one is um, in, in school, um, we focus on a lot of theory, right? We, I, I remember when I, was, when I was in school, we have to hand derive all the uh, regression, um, those formulas and all the probabilities uh, do like a, a statistical testing just by hand. And I work, they might test you that just to see how, how much you understand it, but you don't do that at work. Um, so the important thing is to know how to find, uh, say, Python package or some other tools to do that. And also, you might do the same type of task if you build some type of model or report. This type of model and report might be uh, use multiple times. So you also, if this is a successful model, your, your manager might want to um, make it into some type of data science product and how to uh, scale up. Uh, so at work, you don't need to be uh, too concerned about how do you uh, derive a lot of formulas, um, spend a lot of time on that. Of course, those things are important. Um, especially it's important if you're a data science, like research scientist or researcher, but most of the time uh, you need to think about how do you finish, uh, uh, finish this project, get, get things done. Um, so I feel like there's a missing piece in, in school that we spend so much time on uh, prove those probability theories, but nobody really tell us how do we uh, scale things up? How do we productionize a model? How do you evaluate uh, the pros and cons? Uh, well, in school, you do learn that, but not in the production context. So um, at work, sometimes maybe you work on a team where your managers don't, are, they're not data science managers possible. They're pro product managers uh, or they are engineering managers. And uh, and that, uh, if you are in that kind of team, solving the problem is even more important. And also if you pick a model, you need to think how do you communicate in their language so they can understand what they're doing with your model. Um, I went in my first job, again, another mistake uh, I made was I had a presentation with uh, the marketing team and I started to talk about something like p-value. I just thought everything would know p-value, right? That's what we learned in school. And my manager, she's a science manager, but she. But um, when I did a uh, dry run with a presentation, the 
thing she said the most was nobody would understand what you're talking about. Um, so you need to t uh, tell those people, uh, tell your audience um, what's the application of your of your model, right? What decisions? Uh, what do you? What are the next steps they can get from your model instead of just talking about the theories? Um, another thing is again I mentioned a couple of times um, the application is the most important thing. Uh, when we're in school, if, if you do a homework or some type of project, if you want to improve the performance to one or two percent, you might spend multiple weeks. Um, and uh, if you're familiar with the Netflix prize, uh, a few years ago, they I think it's a million dollar. They want to award this team a uh, million dollar if they improve their algorithm. There was a, a Kaggle competition. So there was a team did uh, improve their algorithm significantly. However, Netflix didn't launch this algorithm, although it's the best. Uh, why is that? Because Netflix, again, is a company, right? If you think about there is a very good recommendation algorithm, but when, whenever you watch Netflix, it has to render um, five seconds. Your audience is going to lose patience. So there is always a trade-off between like your accuracy, you know, automatic precision recall, the performance model versus the um, engineering cost and the, the customer experience. So when, whenever you, your, uh, your manager give you a project, ask, uh, discuss with your manager. Sometimes your, your manager might not even think about the engineering part. So um, you, you, you can also think about it, uh, discuss with the manager would be, uh, uh, a rough level of, of acceptance. Is it um, maybe 80% is good enough? So maybe that would be a waste of your company's time if you spend another month to improve that to 85%. Or maybe there are some other cases um, you really want to have 95% um, of accuracy. And then at that point, you need to decide um, Maybe you, you do need to spend longer time uh, on this data science project. So always think about uh, the production and the engineering cost. So sometimes if your model is too complex, uh, maybe it's really hard to go into production. So maybe you sacrifice the performance by 5%, um, but it's very fast for the engineer to implement it and then if it doesn't really hurt the business value and that that's fine. So um, don't fix it on the performance of the model, but of course the higher, the better, uh, but there is a sweet spot. And sometimes it's very hard to decide. There is no good answer about um, how good is good. Uh, the answer is always, it depends and depends on how urgent you want uh, in this launch of the product and how much risk your team can take. Um, the next one is how, uh, this one I think is very important. How do you do, uh, how do you succeed in, in your projects? Again, in school, we're so used to, we just, uh, uh, put our head down, work on the project. And then at the end of the semester, you submit your homework and you're done. Um, and at work, it's not like this um, because in school, your homework, the requirement is, is very clear. You know what you are supposed to do. But at work, um, the, the, quiet, the requirement is very ambiguous. And uh, sometimes the requirement can change. For example, you, maybe to this week, your manager think about, oh, I want to improve customer uh, experience. I want to have more clicks. And so maybe next week your company has a, uh, some sales drops and then your, your team want to improve revenue. And that might change if you're building a machine learning model, that might change your like objective function. Or if you're design experiment, that might change your uh, metrics, right? So when you work on a project, always uh, communicate with your manager. What are the uh, most important thing? What is the problem you're trying to solve? Uh, if you just 
uh, okay, I have this project, I'll work on it for a month without talking to anyone. And when you deliver the project, maybe it's not important anymore, or maybe it's not what it wanted. So again, because in school, everything, every project, homework is so clearly outlined, there is very little confusion and you can talk to your friends uh, if you don't understand something, right? But in, in workspace, not every problem is clearly put out there and everybody is coming from a different background. So even you're talking about the same thing, uh, there can be a, a little bit, a lot of misunderstanding. So always uh, explain how you perceive this problem to your manager to make sure you understand the problem correctly. Again, in the beginning, when I realized, oh, sometimes we are thinking about different things and try to do this, that might make me sound I feel stupid. I have to repeat what they say in my language. But then I realized my manager actually appreciate that. And also when I repeat the requirement, how I understand this problem, why it is important. Uh, sometimes I also find, oh, uh, there's a lot of different understanding. And I'm glad we caught those discrepancies in the beginning instead of you know in the end. Another thing is in school, you don't just show your uh, draft homework to a professor or your TA, right? Um, you just show them very end. Uh, but at work, I suggest you, whenever you have an idea how you want to solve the problem, show that to your manager. Again, it's not going to be pretty. Maybe even your code is messy. It's totally fine. Show that to them to, to make sure whether it's in the right direction. And this is so important because if this is not something what it wants, again, it's going to waste you a lot of time in the end. Um, so how do you do a great project? Uh, you, do, you do great work not by um, just uh, isolate yourself, uh, spend a lot of effort. You do great work by iterate, right? Your first iteration, your draft might look pretty bad, but if you're in a good di uh, direction, at least you have a good foundation to keep improving by getting the feedback from a manager or other senior people on your team or even... Um, from your customer. And then uh, a great work is achieved by those small iterations. And every iteration is from a um, sometimes a pretty crappy model. And in the end, say after you have 10 iterations, those type of back and forth, uh, you will have a really good product. And then that's the product your company actually, your manager actually wants. So always um, get feedback early.